Welcome back to the Greenhouse Weeders. I'm Beth Meyer Shanai with the Oregon Department of Agriculture's Noxious Weed Control Program, and I'm here to bring you the final dispatch for now in this series of educational weed identification videos. And for this last dispatch, I'm gonna show off our uh, Russian knapweed specimen here. Uh, Russian knapweed is related, but not as closely related as spotted and meadow knapweeds, the ones I showed you earlier. This one actually has a genus called Acroptolons. Its full uh, scientific name is Acroptolons repens. And its foliage is a little lighter. It's got some little tiny hairs, not really ones you can see or feel, except it maybe gives a tiny bit of softness to the leaf. Um, but it does cause this kind of grayish green color to the foliage. And I've got actually three different pots here because as I'll mention later, this is one of the plants that we do biological control on or have agents on. So there are a few other specimens in the greenhouse besides the one that I keep in my educational garden. Um, and some of those have been flowering. So I brought some others along with, let's see if I can get the right one here. Got a couple of different features to show you so i brought out a few different plants to be able to show them all off so this is a very leggy um, specimen of course greenhouse conditions sometimes they're really just reaching for that light and they get a lot longer and skinnier than they normally would be in the field but here i'm able to show you at least um, some of the flower heads and as I mentioned before, one of the keys to identifying knapweeds is what their flower head looks like and what the little bracts here underneath the flower petals look like. And for this plant, for Russian knapweed, you're gonna look for little arches, little curved papery arches that form up the bracts underneath the flower. There are little bits of uh, pointiness kind of coming off the top of them too, but it's a white arch that is um, compared to a darker green spot beneath the arch that, that really gives it away. Also, these have a lot narrower little tops, so it almost looks like a little cone um, shape to the flower head or involucre. And uh, that's one of the ways you can tell um, Russian knapweed here are a couple of flowers, I'm gonna get a few others because there's some difference in color. Often that has to do with um, how fresh the flower is or not, but you might see some variations between purple and pink on the flower as well. So Russian knapweed is listed as a bee noxious weed in Oregon. This has been around a very long time. It was probably brought to the US in the early 18, I'm sorry, the late 1800s. Um, but it has really spread across much of the arid west and becomes quite a problem in um, native grasslands that should be supporting wildlife and livestock. Um, and instead, once Russian knapweed gets in there, uh, it really just takes over, kicks all that out. It can also often be a problem in irrigated croplands in those areas as well. It's a perennial, so it comes back year after year, grows extensive root stock. So when we have a weed that, that, that that's widespread, there might be some individual focused projects on an important control area, but overall we're looking to bring back the natural predators for a plant like this. Um, because the reason why they're thriving is that they don't have any competition or any uh, predation on them like the same plant would have in its native habitat. So that's the reason I brought another specimen out. Um, a little later next week, you may find some dispatches from our entomologist who can go fully into the ins and outs of biocontrol. But I did wanna show you that one of the agents that has been used recently on Russian knapweed has actually formed um, a gall here on this plant, right here in the greenhouse. So this um, is called a gall wasp. And don't let the wasp name scare you. This wasp is tiny and has no stinger and is really only going after um, this plant. And it is using the stem to lay its um, eggs, which burrow in, and then the plant tries to defend itself from all of that action going on inside of its stem by forming a gall. This is quite detrimental to the plant because it's spending its energy protecting itself rather than going to flower as much and going to seed as much and growing as big. So whenever you can get a lot of gall formation, you can actually prevent the plant from um, 
reproducing and spreading a lot more. So that's what's going on there. This is um, formed by a gall wasp and has been forming on this plant in our greenhouse. Um, as I mentioned, knapweeds are um, both on the east and west side of Oregon, but this is a particular east side one. Spotted knapweed that we had earlier kind of is mostly east, a little bit west side, and meadow knapweed is the primarily west side ones. We do have other knapweeds, and hopefully when we can bring you more dispatches in the future, I'll be bringing some more of those out as well. In the meantime, um, keep your eye out. Don't let any new infestations of this get started if you find any um, in Central or Eastern Oregon. Um, and if you need help or if you want to observe to see if you've got any of these um, biological control agents already forming, because they do after they get started by, with some help from us or other people who are out there doing invasive weed work, um, then they can start moving around on their own and looking for new populations and colonizing and helping prevent the spread. So keep your eye out on the progress of those. Also keep your eye out for galls if you know you have spotted knapweed, and we'd love to hear that if you're seeing them. Um, or if you don't see anything like that and you think you might be eligible for a good introduction of these gall mites in your area, that would be something you could contact us for also. Again, I'm going to let Joel Price, our um, entomologist extraordinaire, go over even more of that with you in the next few days. But for now, this is Beth signing off from the greenhouse one more time. It's been great teaching you about weed ID and I hope I'll get to come back and do more in the future. Bye-bye everybody.